football. The Lions and the Packers. Let's join Mike Patrick and the crew. We don't know when a brilliant career will come to an end for Brett Favre, but we do know this. Number four in Lambeau Field is always special. And as the pack gets set to host Detroit at Lambeau Field tonight, the question on everyone's mind. Are we witnessing the final few acts of Brett Favre's Hall of Fame career? All rides eventually come to an end. I've seen the scars, the hurt on your face, the joy in your eyes. The man turned the tundra of Lambeau Field into his own backyard. A rock for the team, for the city, for your family. It's like they lived through you. They made your story their story. And they love you for it. They don't know you like I do. I can still hear your voice. Hey, rookie. You know I got you. I got your back. This is the end. It's been a privilege for me and for all of us. All rides come to an end. But a legend is forever. He is one of the greatest players ever in the NFL's most storied arena. And in spite of the record, in spite of the cold, it is a sellout crowd because this is football's perfect stage for a legendary performance. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mike Patrick. It's great to have you with us. At 2 and 10, the Packers are struggling through one of the worst seasons they have ever had. Injuries have robbed their offense of much of its firepower, and turnovers have just killed them in close games. Make no mistake, Brett Favre is still an incredible talent, a Hall of Famer in waiting. But, Joe, it's also no mistake that this year has not been vintage of Brett. It really has not, Mike. There's no denying that Brett Favre is struggling. As a matter of fact, he leads the league in interceptions with 21 and probably leads the league in bruises after the game against Chicago last week. He's also had to play without his top wide receiver and his two running backs. He admittedly said he's tried to put too much on his shoulder. But don't expect Brett Favre to get cautious at any point. He's a gunslinger, and he said simply, I can't can't change who I am and you know what Mike we don't want him to change who he is tonight he gets a chance to put another notch in that gun all right thanks Joe the Lions of course have been a major disappointment this year all those number one draft choices and the offense still can't get it done Paul at four and eight this is not what Jeff Garcia signed up for when he came to Detroit no it isn't Mike and Jeff Garcia had a storied career in San Francisco he went to three Pro Bowls this year he came to Detroit to be with his old coach, Steve Mariucci. Unfortunately, Mariucci got fired two weeks ago. Due to injuries and an inconsistent offense, it has not been a great year for Garcia. When we were talking to him yesterday. I said, you know, in the last four games, what would you like to accomplish with this team? He said, I want these guys to battle every down. I want them to complete every single play. But most of all, I want these guys to have some fun. And wouldn't it be a feather in Jeff Garcia's cap tonight if he beat Brett Favre, the Green Bay Packers, here at Lambeau Field? That it would, Paul. And when we come back, Susie with Brett Favre on this season and his future. Later tonight, we'll crown our Sunday stud. Here's your chance to predict the stud for next weekend's matchups. Throughout the week, log on to ESPN.com and cast your vote. You could win an all-new 2007 GMC Yukon.
Some say that by 2020, we'll have used up half the world's oil. Some say we already have. Making the other half last longer will take innovation, conservation, and collaboration. Will you join us? Bud Light salutes the football fans of Detroit and Green Bay, where the game is always on and the Bud Light is just right. Welcome back to Lambeau Field, where for the last 14 seasons, Brett Favre has had his team at least in playoff contention, but not this season. So how's he handling it? Well, consider what he and his wife, Deanna, have been through in just the last two years. Her conquering cancer, the death of her brother and Brett's dad, and the family being uprooted by Hurricane Katrina. It helped put football in the proper perspective. This is the first for me. Um... But I hate to say it, but if you play long enough, I guess that's one of the perks of playing a long time is you'll see just about everything. Never thought I'd see us being 2 and 10. But, um, you know, it, I never thought I'd win MVP either. And I won three. And so if, if I'm willing to take the good, I've got to be willing to take the bad, as hard as that may be. And I've tried to... You know, the, I, I can, I know I can say this, and, and Deanna and I have talked about this. It sure ain't as bad as it has been, what we've had to deal with off the field, you know, um, or what other people have to deal with sometimes. It's just football. It's big in Green Bay. It's big in Wisconsin. People love it here, understandably so. It's got a lot of history and tradition, but there'll be another season next year. There'll be another season the year after that. Um, at some point, there'll be another quarterback in Green Bay. Uh, life goes on. Bart Starr, as great as he was, life goes on, you know. And um, it will go on for Brett Favre. And this is just a, another season, not a good one, but it's another season. And people at some point will forget and think of a career as opposed to a season. And I have to do that as well. As for retirement, Brett told me he has some soul searching to do. He admits he doesn't know if he'll ever be totally committed to one decision or the other, yet he realizes it wouldn't be fair to anyone to wait until the last minute to decide. Mike, the only thing he is sure of, the decision will not be based on this season. Thank you, Susie. ESPN presents Visa Skycam, innovative technology that gives us a unique angle no other single camera in the world can achieve. And we're very proud to bring it to you every Sunday night. We'll be back in Green Bay, the Lions and the Packers after this. Relive another great moment on ESPN. It's the biggest day of racing in America. The fabled Indianapolis 500. Difficult to capture for the most savvy veteran drivers. More difficult for a young 26-year-old gunning for his first chicken flag at the Brickyard at Indianapolis. But Elio Castroneves defied the odds and won the big race, climbed the catch fence, and the legend of Spider-Man was born. A celebration of sports memories from around the globe. Great moments on ESPN. ESPN welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. It is a balmy 14 degrees at game time with an 8 mile an hour wind. That means the wind chill is plus 5. It's going to get worse with a chance of flurries. Just what they like here in Green Bay. <laughs> You say that with such a sly grin. You know, everybody you meet outside, this, they're happy. They are, well, there's a reason for that, too. It also looks like we have wandered into the world's largest duck blind. <laughs> <laughs> the Lions get the ball first. R.W. McQuarters from the nine. And McQuarters across the 30. For the Lions up front, Damian Woody is their best player, acquired last year as a free agent from the Patriots. With all their number ones in wideout, no one has caught more passes than an unknown free agent, Scotty Vines. And Kevin Jones, another number one pick, is the key to the running game, but he is only averaging 3.3 yards a carry this year. Schlesinger is the blocking back. 
and the first play whistled dead. And it will go against Detroit. Full start. Offense, number 79. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Mike Carey, one of the best referees in football, all bundled up this evening. It's just not one of those things that the Detroit Lions need to have happen to them in a hostile environment, a struggling football team. First play, you commit a penalty. Now you're first and 15 and have to change the calls. So back them up inside the 27-yard line. Sean Bryson has checked in at running back. And that goes nowhere as the Packers, who have improved so much on defense under Jim Bates, throw them back. That improved Packer defense has gotten a big year out of Aaron Campman. He has a career-high six and a half sacks at left end. Nick Barnett may be undersized at 232, but he's the fastest middle linebacker around and leads the pack with 151 tackles. And Al Harris is having a career season, a great example last week. He held the exceptional Musin Mohammed without a catch. Second and 14, empty backfield for Garcia in that West Coast offense. He unloads, trying to hit Scotty Fines downfield, but he is covered stride for stride by Ahmad Carroll. Jeff Garcia has really won the job by default. When Dick Duran took over for Steve Mariucci a week ago, he decided that Jeff Garcia would give him his best chance to win. And the one thing that you saw them take a shot at doing, they haven't done much all year, and that's throw the ball up the field. With receivers at 6'2 and 6'3, you have to do it more than just this one time. Joey Harrington, who you saw their first round draft choice four years ago, sitting on the bench in favor of Garcia, who is better at this West Coast offense, and there's Vines. Wide open over the middle on a blown coverage in Scotty Vines to midfield. Here's an undrafted free agent out of Wyoming. That was his 32nd catch. He's got more grabs than all of the number one draft picks. Well, Jeff Garcia, they said it has the best chance for them to win. Look at this play. Vines comes over the middle, and there are two linebackers standing there, and nobody is around him. That was Nick Barnett, number 56, that didn't cover him coming across. People seem to forget how good Jeff Garcia was in San Francisco. He set club records, and he was following two guys in Montana and Young who were pretty good quarterbacks in their day. Here's a big run off the right side by Jones and Kevin Jones inside the 10. Boy, they missed Kevin Jones the last week or so. He's had a thigh problem, and now he's back to full strength. And, and you see what happens when he has this kind of speed. Outside, just set up and go. It's a one cut and go. Now he turns the shoulders upfield and he runs by and away from everyone. 40 yard carry for Kevin Jones, his longest of the year. And they need him to be able to establish a running game to take the pressure off of Jeff Garcia. They are just inside the 10, so it's first and goal. Jones. Al Harris waiting for him, but he picks up five yards. Well, what's happening with the outside? You saw it twice now that Kevin Jones went to his right. He went to the end and then bounced it to the outside. What's happening is the defensive ends are getting caught inside. The linebacker has to get over there. Now watch on the right-hand side of your screen. You see the defensive end go down? Look where the linebacker is. He's sitting in the hole. That's Barnett. He's sitting in the hole waiting. He's got to attack that hole and make sure there's no place for Jones to run. Second and goal from the five. Jones again. Driving the Lions indicate touchdown. Nothing from the officials yet. And they're going to mark him just short of the goal line. This is when you see the movement by that offensive line. Now you see Jones. He sees the hole right off tackle is plugged. So he bounces it back into the inside. And Kevin Jones... Joe, you said they're glad to have him back. He's down. Kevin Jones is the injured lion. We will check on him when we come back. 
Hello from the ESPN Soccernet Press Pass studio. While well, many of you down under are wondering how have Australia fared in the World Cup draw? Well, uh, Tommy Smith and Janusz Mahalik are with me to discuss that. Janusz, first of all, the Aussies have got Brazil, Croatia and Japan. But the first game's against Japan and it might be winnable. Yeah, it could have been much, much worse. I think they should get the three points. I certainly think that they are capable of winning. And, you know, as you go on, I think Croatia for Viduka and Chilina, players like that, that's going to be certainly interesting. Yeah, it certainly is, but I think the first game is key. If they get the three points, you throw out the game of Brazil. You don't expect to get anything against them, but you could certainly expect to get something against Croatia. I think uh, Australia will measure up very well against Croatia, and I think they have a real good shot at this one. Maybe three points might get them into the next round. Who knows? Yes, perhaps an opportunity for Australia going into that final group match against Croatia. Just to recap once again, Australia's first game is against Japan, the second one against Brazil, and the third game in Germany against the Croatians. thinking of success he's only thinking of destruction but to conquer he must obliterate the hopes of his opponent and be the only man standing fight night only on espn back in green bay where kevin jones has been injured and this is ugly See where his right arm gets caught under Damian Woody's and he falls. Woody falls on his arm. Amazingly, he went off and didn't look like it was too serious. Third and goal. Arto's pinner comes in and tries to hit the middle. He's a 232-pound <laughs> running back out of Kentucky, and he didn't get an inch. Now, if you're the Detroit Lions here, I think you go for it. I really do. You're down. You got him pinned in. I think you just go for it. Watch, Pitter. You want to see a guy hit a wall? Watch this. Boom. <laughs> and he didn't move. Once he hit the defensive line, Barnett is there. Once he hits it, that was it. There was no movement forward. Jason Hansen will come on for what is basically an extra point. Will qualify as a 19-yard field goal attempt. Hansen has missed once in his career at Lambeau Field. Three nothing Detroit on its opening drive. Now it will be Brett Favre's turn. Bladder control is an issue, and, and I've mastered that. You need to be drinking at the right time during the two-hour session so that on the 15-minute break is when you use the restroom. There's a huge mass rush to the bathroom. There's so many people. You're screwed. I can't even believe they're waiting in a line like that. There aren't very many women who play poker, so I can just casually get up and go to the restroom with no line. I'm sorry, I didn't see you. This year, it's a huge advantage to be a woman because you get right into the bathroom, you don't have to wait. There's actually things you can take to strengthen everything down there. If you wear a catheter or it depends, you're good to go. I know right when the perfect time to leave is, and I bolt. There's this secret bathroom that I'm not telling anybody about. That's where I go. For everyone else, I wait in line. Good luck. <laughs> At least you guys didn't follow me to the bathroom. ESPN Sunday Night Football, brought to you by smooth and refreshing Bud Light. Great taste, great times. Best Buy, thousands of possibilities. Get yours. MasterCard, there's some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. And GMC trucks and SUVs, we are professional grade. Yeah, they're used to cold temperatures in Green Bay, but this was ridiculous. 46 below zero during the ice bowl in 1967. Would you concede that that was cold? Oh, yeah. And there they are, Paul, as you predicted. The nuts. <laughs> the squirrels are out here. Be careful. <laughs> Hanson to kick to Ahmad Carroll, who waits at his six. Carroll runs up. 
crosses the 20, stopped at the 29-yard line. Brett Favre on an Ironman streak, now starting in his 200th, 218th consecutive ball game. That is absolutely remarkable that somebody could play that kind of a stretch. It's almost 15 years straight that he started every game. With a chin strap with one buckle on each side. There aren't many of those left either, folks. They'll start in the eye with two wide receivers, and Sam Congato gets the first carry, gets back to the line of scrimmage. Green Bay's offensive line lost both starting guards this year, but got a boost with the return of Mike Flanagan, a terrific center. Without the injured Javon Walker, Donald Driver is the passing target. He's in the NFL's top 10 in catches and yards. And with nine passing yards, Brett Favre will have 3,000 for the 14th time. Nobody else has ever done that. Dan Marino is the other player with 13. Blitz coming. Favre has the ball knocked away. They hold him back, and the Lions have it at the 18-yard line. James Davis came through and got the football when really Brett Favre has the ball fall out of his hands Paul yeah his, his hands are cold and the ball come James Davis does come in okay number 52 he hits now look at the ball he doesn't hit Favre he hits the blocking back up front Gato and the ball comes out of Favre's hands that's just he slips out of his hands that's a fumble now Brett Favre hurt his hands last week against Chicago you see the shininess around his index finger I don't believe that had anything to do with it. That's just great individual effort by James Davis. And when the ball gets that cold, it's very slick. Oh, yeah. Pinner. And Pinner stopped at the line of scrimmage. Pinner with 60 carries this year as it has been a lot of running back by committee with Kevin Jones injured at times he and Bryson have gotten a lot of carries it must be well you did it must be difficult for a quarterback that every time he turns around he looks in the backfield he's got a different guy well, it, it is a little bit difficult but you really want to focus on what's down the field more than what's around you Gatto did a nice job of picking up the blitz ball just fell out of Brett's hands Garcia, deep drop for him, goes out to Pinner in the flat. Pinner trying to get the first down, taken out of bounds at the 10. Brady Papinga, the rookie linebacker, made the stop. Let's go to Susie. Mike, in an effort to get his team ready for the cold, Dick Duran went to the extremes. They pumped freezing cold air into their field house. They dropped it to 22 degrees. He told us a lot of his young guys have never played in conditions like this. He wanted them to get used to playing in their gear, to be focused in the cold. The message, you just got to play through it. Well, Susie, that's what we did in Paul's room the other night. Open all the windows, <laughs> got real cold in there. <laughs> Bryson will have the first down at the five. Another first and goal situation for the Detroit Lions. Green Bay has a very young second. They got Roy Manning, Michael Montgomery, got rookies playing. Of course, Nick Barnett having the best year he's had. And it's a dis it's a should be a disciplined defensive front and they have to coordinate to make sure that the tackles and ends are in the right position the Lions have done a nice job cutting back against the grain with a lot of these runs in this first quarter well, and now Green Bay, Green Bay has out. to take a timeout because they were trying to get Papinga on the field and couldn't do it in time so they burned a timeout on defense the finest figure skaters from around the globe compete in the ISU Grand Prix from the city of St. Petersburg, the Cup of Russia. Tuesday on ESPN. ESPN Sport Legends presents Willie Shoemaker. Willie Shoemaker seemed born to ride horses. He impressed all in the racing world. His numbers were really spectacular right from the start. He was a perfectly formed man who weighed 98 pounds his entire riding career. That was a great advantage for him, by the way. He never had to diet, so he had his full strength all the time. 
Shoemaker guided 8,833 winners, a world record that would stand until 1999. In 42 years, Shoemaker won 11 Triple Crown races and 1,009 stakes races. In his final days, Shoemaker lived as a paraplegic following a terrible car accident. He died in his sleep on October 12, 2003. Shoe told me once, uh, and I really believe it, that he always communicated better with horses than he ever did with people. Who is today's Sunday stud? How about Drew Bledsoe? Passed for 332 and three. Tom Brady passed for almost as many yards. Rudy Johnson, and we'll interrupt for a second, go back to the play, which gets them inside the five to about the three and a half yard line. Pinner got another carry there. You know, I wouldn't run up in there where Grady Jackson is. I mean, Why? Because there's no room up there. <laughs> there <laughs> I had to ask. <laughs> Number 75, Grady Jackson, there is no room there. Like, there's no room in the inn? <laughs> there's no room there. You did? Hello, Grady. It's a compliment, friend. He is the immovable object. Oh, man, he's something in that middle. He's been playing with chronically bad knees and a hip injury. And now Garcia is going to burn a timeout. We'll be back in a minute. Hello from the ESPN Soccernet Press Pass studio. The Australians have drawn Brazil in their World Cup group, and manager Goose Hiddink knows it won't be easy. We have that uh, individual uh, class that any, any moment they can decide. So it's, it's very difficult to, uh, to surprise them. So whatever the tactic might be, they, they try to dominate. But I think, I think Australia must come here and not just be uh, a shy team. I think it's the character of the team to, to get, to get a, a game on the pitch, and that, that's what, what we want to do. Let's get reaction from Janusz Mihalik and Tommy Smith. Janusz, Japan and Croatia are the other teams in the group. Well, Brazil may be out of reach for them, but they have to feel that the first game is going to be very important against uh, Japan, and that's where they need to look for the three points. Tommy? If they get those three points, hey, anything can happen after that. I mean, it's a tough group, but you get three points in the bag, hey, you can hope after that. And it all begins for the Australians against Japan in Kaiserslautern. When a, when a boxer prepares, he's only thinking of success. He's only thinking of destruction. But to conquer, he must obliterate the hopes of his opponent and be the only man standing. Fight night, only on ESPN. Back in Green Bay where the Lions lead the Packers 3-0 and have a third and goal at the Green Bay four-yard line. A couple different ways you can go here. You can you can get, you know, Roy Williams, you can take a shot with him against Al Harris, but they match up pretty well. I like Marcus Pollard, their tight end. Empty backfield. Comes the blitz. Garcia throws it away. Boy, what a great job blitzing that time. Lennon, number 53, and he's starting tonight. He comes off of that, that left linebacker spot. Watch to the top of your screen. Here he comes. Nobody blocks Lennon. Garcia doesn't have a chance except to throw the ball away, and he does the proper thing. Boy, that's a sellout blitz. I mean, it's man-to-man -man coverage. When you put five guys out like that, you know that one guy's coming free. Lennon just did a nice job of getting in the way of Garcia's vision. Same formation. No motion. They oh. give it on the handoff. And Garcia watches Nick Barnett just swallow up the running back, Sean Bryson. Well, you know, you just, you, you really got to love a blitz like this on the goal line because you really have to have a heady person doing it. Look at Barnett. He comes up. He sees Garcia. But the first thing that he checks is the running back. I got him first. And then he's got the ball, so I get him. They just don't have enough people to block it. That's a great call by Jim Bates, their defensive coordinator. Now Hanson with another chip shot field goal. And it's 6-0. So Green Bay putting a huge hole by the turnover, and they only allow a field goal. They're down 6-0. You know what? 
Roy Williams told us yesterday, he comes in and he sits down in our meeting and he's a wide receiver number 11. And the first thing that came, really came out of his mouth is, we cannot win unless we can run the ball. We can't win with field goals. Now they've been down there twice and they have two field goals. That's it. Well, this whole football team has had a problem understanding what it's taken to win. And it's been there since Matt Millen has really taken over. The most wins they've had is six. And each year it's been less and less and less. It's a football team that's made up of a lot of young players. 18 of them have three years experience or less. Dick Jerron would love the opportunity to get a chance to grow with them. And Matt Millen's record just hasn't been very, very good. You look at the wins. I mean, it's 20 and 56 in five seasons. Ultimately, you're judged by how you win in this league. And, it, and he's the one that's choosing the coaches. Well, you know, Mike, the other thing, too, is Detroit was inside the Green Bay's five-yard line. They had five snaps inside the five-yard line. They came out with six points. What was really odd when Steve Mariucci was fired by Matt Millen, uh, Matt said we have five weeks left to develop our younger players and that one of those guys would be Joey Harrington the quarterback and the first thing that Dick Duran did was say Jeff Garcia gives us the best chance to win. He's the guy who's playing. So there's a disconnect there somewhere. Duran is trying to win now. Matt Millen is talking about next year. Monday night electrifying Michael Vick and the Falcons host the Saints on Monday night football 9 Eastern on ABC. Get to see Michael Vick next week against the Chicago Bears who the Pittsburgh Steelers did a heck of a job against them today. Steelers still in that hunt for a wild card. How about your boy Jerome Bettis? Notre well, Dame. 100 yards, two touchdowns. Wasn't he special? <laughs> Perfect weather for Jerome. He's a mutter. Snowy, muddy. Sam Congato, who has become a local hero here, takes it out to the 42-yard line. Here's a kid who went to Liberty University, one double A. Started two games in his career. He was the third team tailback at Liberty. Played behind Eugene Goodman and Dre Barnes. I don't think either one of them are working in the NFL at this point. <laughs> he is the fifth running back to start a tailback this year for the Green Bay Pack. And Gatto taken down. He's picked up nine yards in the last two runs. This young man, born in Nigeria, did not move to the United States until he was nine years old in 1991, went on to play high school football in Columbia, South Carolina, and won two All-State awards. Then to Liberty University, Division I AA. 2005, he was signed by the Chiefs, an undrafted free agent, waived by them, signed to the Packers practice squad. When all these other guys got hurt, he was elevated. And there's his mother, Grace, here to watch this young man play football and far delivers a strike for a first down Green Bay goes into Detroit territory for the first time Robert Ferguson showing those good hands on a 10 yard bullet and Brett Favre still gets that baby out there in a hurry well wait a minute you're talking about a six degree night and this pass is thrown <laughs> and this pass is cut look at the hands Ferguson with that catch I mean that's unbelievable well, you know, we were down on the field, Paul. It's not that bad down there, is it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, would, I, just, I went down twice the second time to get my ears. <laughs> and Brett Favre has now hit 3,000 yards for the 14th season in the history of the NFL. Nobody else has ever done it. Congratulations to Brett Favre on another record. And Andre Thurman makes a rare catch, only his fourth of the year. R.W. McCorders on defense. And who did he beat with this record? Dan Marino, who had 13 in his remarkable career. Dan Marino is one, one of the guys who would be the first one to say, you know, records are to be broken, but it's hard to break Dan Marino's record. <laughs> yeah, you gotta be around that's why he can time. say that. Yeah, you got to be around a long time. I think there's a difference in Green Bay and Miami, too, to be honest with you. <laughs> really? Yeah. Tonight, it's about 80 degrees. Fake the draw to Gatto and then throw it to him out of the backfield. This young man has done absolutely everything since coming on to play. Wally Rayner makes the tackle. Sam Con Gatto, I mean, he works so hard. He is such a pleasant, intelligent kid who was planning on going to medical school. He says it's the biggest thrill in his life because every play he stands next to Brett Favre in the huddle. 
and he's more concerned about pass blocking than he is anything else because he said, I'm not going to be the guy that gets this man hurt. He's a neat kid. Packers on the move at the Lions 27 yard line. Gatto cuts it back inside, picks up three. Let's check in with Susie. Well, Mike, I wondered about Gatto that if you're the third string at Liberty, why would you pursue the NFL? And he said the question isn't why, it's why not? Because it almost fell into his lap. He said he didn't actively pursue the NFL, it was more of a passive pursuit. And he really didn't look for an agent or have po coaches put in a good word for him. The opportunity presented itself, and he figured med school's always going to be there, but not the NFL. When we asked Mike Sherman, Susie, you know, what's the deal? He was the third string tailback. He says, yeah, we got to go find a first two. <laughs> Far for the end zone, double coverage, actually triple coverage, and Ferguson can't get there. The fans think he was cut off on their route. Well, now that's one of the problems that Brett Favre runs into. That was a gunslinger throw. If he had Javon Walker, which he lost in the first game against Detroit, he would throw it up a little bit short and let him go make a play. Here he pumps to the left, looks, just sets and throws. There's no way Robert Ferguson is anywhere near open. There are two defenders right next to him, and it's one of those throws that Brett just tries to make sometime. He's got to be smarter the closer he gets to scoring territory. Four-man rush, good Lions front line there Henderson gets the ball out of the backfield gets to the 18 he's going to be about a yard shy as the middle linebacker Earl Holmes the 10 year veteran made the tackle crowd wants him to go for it but Mike Sherman is going to send on the field goal team well you know you won two games you're at home the crowd wants you to go for it I mean this isn't what Sherman would do but why not go for it well because you're trying to build something over these four games. You're not just going out there and going through the motions. You're trying to win football games. It's early in the game. You make the right decision. Longwell from 36 yards. And the Packers are on the board. That's why you kick it. Yeah. <laughs> Wrong. You Wrong. riverboat gambler, 